Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum. Salar Khan here and with energy band diagram, right? We started it in the previous video, but then we decided to take it after the next video, right? So, energy band. What is this energy band? So, let me tell you that we have two types of energy band, right? Two types of energy band. Two types of energy band number one is the valence band and number two so with this red color is the conduction band now what are these so an electron you know the charge carriers are electrons and the conduction is due to electrons but for an electron to conduct, it must be in the free state. That is also you know. But how does it become that free? So that free electron is present in this conduction band. And how has it reached that conduction band? This valence band is what? This is basically you can see the valence shell of that electron. So in this valence shell, if the electron is present, it is not conducting any electric current it is not being the cause of electric current but when it is transferred to the conduction band so only then it can conduct and how is it transferred by giving energy to it by giving energy to it so let me draw a diagram for it in between these two this energy we have to give some energy that energy is represented by the forbidden gap so I am drawing over here now let's say this is the valence band with the blue color right this is the valence band okay now the conduction band is at a higher energy level uh, from this uh, from this what from this valence band this is the conduction band and in between these two in between these two we have the forbidden gap or the energy band gap so let this green color represent the forbidden gap or the energy band gap All right. Now, now I told you what what happens in the conduction band is that the electrons over here electrons are free to conduct. Are free to conduct. Right? In the valence band what do you have? They are not free to conduct. They are bound bound to the atomic structure of the atom. Over here the electrons are bound to atomic structure of the atom and this uh, forbidden gap or energy gap is represented by E naught or it is represented by E G and over here the electrons are not allowed electrons are not allowed here all right now what do you have if an electron is present if an electron is present over here right electron is present in the valence shell so you have to give it sufficient amount of energy to overpass this energy gap which means you have to give it energy greater than the C naught or EG to overcome this forbidden gap and reach into the conduction gap to, 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 to assume the free state and to start conduction and I believe this is clear. All right. Now we've seen uh, previously the, that the insulators are not the good conductors. Why? Because here we see another reason that the forbidden gap is very high for insulators, right? Uh, so there is a lot of energy required to remove to move this electron from the valence band into the conduction band for conduction. So let's say this is the diagram for insulators, right? So for insulators. For insulators, this energy gap is very high. Energy gap 
is very high. And we have uh, some values over here for uh, uh, for an insulator. Uh, the the forbidden energy, the the in energy required, e.g., is greater than almost five electron volts. This five electron volts. What is this? So we are coming to it just in a moment, right? Now we have uh, for the semiconductors. For first, uh, yes, for the semiconductors. So if this is the diagram for the semiconductor, this is the valence band, right? The blue color represents the valence band. The green color, the red color represents the uh, the what? The conduction band, and the green color if represents this forbidden energy gap. That is the energy required. So, if this is for uh, for what? For the semiconductors. So this is just a moderate. All right, for semiconductors. For semiconductors, what do you have? Uh, this E naught or E G is in between conductors and insulators. And we, we saw it for insulators, it's very high. So for conductors, it would be very low. And what do you have? For the semiconductors, it will be in between them. So we have a value over here for silicon. For germanium, we have 0 0.0 EG for germanium. We also have value of EG for silicon. So for germanium, it is 0 0.067 electron volts. And for it is 1.6 electron volts for silicon. Yes, 1.1 and 0 0.67. Zero, oh, and I write both of them wrong. So 0 0.67 electron volt for germanium and 1.1 for silicon. Yes. Now what do you mean by this? If it means for any germanium atom, for the valence electron, if you give it an energy equal to 0.67 electron volts, the electron in the valence band will move into the conduction band and now it will be free for conduction. Now. The last that we have is the uh, is conductors. All right, so this is let's say the conduction band. The blue color represents the uh, valence band, and the green color is for the forbidden gap. So what do you have? In this case, the for the conduction band and the uh, and the valence band are almost overlapping which means we have no energy difference between the valence band and the conduction band in case of what in case of uh, in case of conductors right so this would mean what this would mean that for conductors so let me write it down first for conductors The energy band, the, the, the conduction band and valence band are overlapping. Valence band overlaps, which means the energy difference between these two, which is represented by EG or E0, is you can say approximately equal to zero. You can also say 100% equal to zero, but it could be a 0, 0.00 something, you know. So you can say it's about equal to zero, right? And this zero electron volts. So for conductors and uh, conduction band and valence band overlaps, right? Uh, for insulators, we have the most energy required. For semiconductors, the energy required in between these two. Have a look, 1.1 and over here we have five electron volts. So five electron, 1.1 is quite less than this. Uh, uh, 5 electron volt, right? 1.1 is quite less than 5. I believe I said it the opposite, right? So now, electron volt. What is this electron volt? So this is something you need to know. Now, what do you have? You know from the definition of potential, uh, potential is what? Potential. Electric potential is the work done per unit charge. If I write it in symbols, so V is equal to W 
by Q. That is something you know, right? So you can uh, cross multiply it that uh, W is uh, W is uh, what uh, V into Q. All right. So now I can if for 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 uh, wait for a charge of you know one electron and for a potential of one volt, what is the work done? So work done for a, a potential of one volt. And for a charge of one electron, that is 1.6 into 10 raised to the power negative 19 coulombs, right? So this results in a 1.6 into 10 raised to the power negative 19 joules. And this, if I represent in electron volts, so the unit for this work, so one electron volt, one electron volt is this much joules, 1.6 into 10 raised to the power negative 19 joules so this is something important relationship and how is it derived so it is derived from the equation of potential so that's all about it that's all about the energy band diagram see you in the next lecture with what with the extrinsic how are those extrinsic semiconductors made that was the n type and p type we saw in the last video i believe so till then take care goodbye